I walked in and I was doing a band for, uh, or sound for a band called Mayfield. And I had four vocalists and all four vocalists had the beats as their vocal mic. So I walked in and I was like, okay, vocal mics, got it, good. Cause I went to IPR, um, downtown Minneapolis. So I had an instructor of mine, uh, Walter Chancellor, he had mentioned that they needed a sound person that night. And he's like, you know, it's not gonna be a ton of money, but here it is. And I walked in and every time I've walked into a venue since, I've always seen a good beat. To be honest, I'm not sure what my first encounter was, but the first encounter that sticks out in my mind was taking a live sound class with Peter Greenland at McNally Smith. And we were watching this old video of a Pink Floyd concert from decades ago. And he paused it and was like zoomed in on the vocal mics just to point out that like, even at that level of concerts, biggest show in the world at the time, they were still just using 58s as vocal mics. Well, I'm sure that my first encounter with the SM58 was playing dives in Iowa City, Iowa, my hometown in high school. We had reached the point of diminishing returns with uh, the plug-in tweaking, trying to get the right sort of lo-fi vibe. And uh, we got the harebrained scheme to uh, reamp the mix through the studio monitors into a stereo pair of SM58s. And we did a wet-dry blend uh, with the original source sound and the uh, microphone capture, and uh, it had just the right amount of je ne sais quoi. It was awesome. Uh, New Orleans style brass band. Ain't no other way to do a tuba. You loop the the cable around one of the the the, the bits on the instrument, and then you drop the fifty eight inside the bell. It bobs your uncle. Well, I I would say I really enjoyed. Um... I just like organs a lot, so the Leslie Cab, I mixed the high and low with 58s. But I also did, for a band that I recorded at IPR, um, we did our own convolution reverb for one of their songs that they had on their album. And so we took a bunch of different 58s that they had in uh, the studio and basically placed them all over the room. And that was a really cool way to use 58s because they all had the same tonality that I was looking for, but in different spaces in the it's a duo um, uh, that plays traditional Irish music, and they occasionally bring in a lady to do as, as an Irish dancer to accompany them. And they they played a festival that I was running sound at, and so she came in with this little like three foot square plywood board and was like, "Can you mic this? We we want to be able to hear the dancing in because uh, it's essential. The dancers are essentially the percussionist in this group, you know." So yeah, I kind of just put a 58 at an angle, pointed down at this piece of plywood that she danced on, and it worked surprisingly well. It sounded great. Well, it's my first choice for live vocals. Um, it's got just the right polar pattern to uh, reject any uh, feedback tendencies in a uh, vocal mic with a, with a floor wedge on the stage. It, we're, all of us are really familiar with them. All of us engineers get really familiar with them um, to the point where I know the EQ curve of the mic ex, you know, by heart. I know exactly which frequencies I need to cut. And if I've been listening to my PA, I can EQ the mic before I've even heard anything coming through it just because of familiarity, which is always a helpful thing, especially when you're low on time. In festival situations, it's great because you can just, you don't even have to dial in your PA half the time. You put, the, put a 58 in front of the vocal, you know what it's going to sound like. Really, a 58 is such a solid mic that you can use it for anything. Um, vocals, I've put it on guitar caps before. I've mic'd uh, grand pianos, high and lows with 58s before. Um, like I said, the Leslie cab, bass amp cab, you can, you can really use a 58 for anything, which is so great because I think any studio or any live venue that you walk into as an engineer or um, somebody that's going to mix you know, a session, you're always going to find 58s because they're reliable mics. They give you the sound quality you want. They're durable, so especially live sound setting, uh, you can throw those microphones, literally. They've dented up over time. Even rusting, and you can put them in a bucket, clean them up, take all the little you know, filters out, make sure they're all good again, or take like a end of a screwdriver and like kind of bend them back into the round shape, fix them up, and they're going to last you know, like 10 years. You know? So that's what I love about 58s in general is, yeah, I would never feel bad about running and driving a 58 on something because it's, it's going to do exactly what I know I need it to do.
Uh, versatility. Um, period, paragraph, first and last reason. It's you can you can make a whole band with the 58. Um, there you go.